Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Southern Outdoorsman Podcast. Deer hunters rejoice because we're going to be talking deer on this one. Uh, and we're, we're going to talk a little bit about turkey hunting just because it kind of ties in with the deer scouting. Uh, Jacob, you were, uh, you know, last week we talked about uh, I killed a turkey, you missed a couple turkeys, uh, and then you ended up going hunting with our buddy Greg Mayhair from Meadow Creek Mounts. So uh, we're going to talk about your hunts with him as well as the cameras that you pulled when you were kind of hunting your way through this area. We got them on the TV over here. Yep. We're going we're gonna to be going through this card live on the podcast. This is going to be fun. Uh, Jacob, how are you doing? Oh, tired. Exhausted. A little bit tired. Beat down from the turkeys. Beat down with the heat. Beat down with the hike today. So a week has passed since the last episode, but about uh, 35 minutes have passed since we recorded the last episode. So yep. we're, doing a, we're doing a back-to-back here. Down in the uh, Due to time constraints, we're doing a back-to-back. So Jacob, you haven't hunted anymore since then. So Jacob hasn't just been like, well, you know, an extra, you know, just... Uh, I don't know, week of, of mental beatdown. No, but we do have some stuff to talk about that we didn't cover on last week's episode. Yeah, yes. Some couple hunts, turkeys dying, turkeys kind of getting away. Dude, some, look at how much weight you lost. Uh, damn, look, Dude, son. look at you. You look like a little fat kid. Holy cow. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to throw that up on the podcast. Did I have a beard right there? Yeah, dude. Either that or you got a big old double chin dude, hanging down. Dude, can you zoom in on that? Oh, let's see. Can I, can I zoom yeah, in? Yeah. Oh, my God. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, dude, if I saw that dude come through the woods, I'd be like, who's got the pill bear? Who's better, got the pills bear? You better hide your Snickers bars. <laughs> See that guy dude, coming through dude, the woods. Hide your honey buns and hide your Snickers because hey, Jacob's hey, coming. Jacob's doing good, everybody. Jacob's losing weight. We're going to give him a round of applause. So We're building some muscles after hunting over here. God dang. Yeah, dude. I am like Look at that. four pant sizes down since that photo. Dang, dude. Big old fella right when there. When was it? When was this photo? This was December third. Oh, when we hung it up. Oh yeah, I forgot it was dark when we were hanging that camera. Yeah. So yeah, we, we were doing these after dark. Anywho, uh dude, you look you like big old Sasquatch right there. Yeah, that's a thick boy right there. Listen, that that is a Matua. <laughs> buck right Mature there. buck. Listen, dude, you, feel, hey, you, hey, you missed a meal. You'll feed the freezer with that one. <laughs> fill the freezer. Feed the freezer. Fill feed the, the fr freezer. Fill the freezer. Throw your another Zen in. I, I just did. I'm, I'm nicotined <laughs> up right now, trying to stay awake. All right, what were we saying? I derailed that. Whatever you were saying there, you hunted with Greg. Oh uh, yeah, I was just saying that and did a uh, hunted with Greg twice now, and dude, it was awesome. I ain't gonna lie. Got a bird kilt. Got a bird kill. Uh, we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, kind of, to be honest, it was the again, just like your bird you killed, what we talked about last week, kind of non textbook hunt you set up below the turkey. Yeah. Same situation for me and Greg. You got to do what you got to do. So, uh, so this is a, that was a turkey you've been messing with. Now, to give a little more backstory too, when, uh, when Greg came down here, uh, I wasn't able. I don't think I was able to get out as long as y'all or something. Or or I already told Colton with it. I was going to go with him, so I took Colton to the club, yep. and y'all went to this different area. And um, with Colton, I wanted to. Uh, well, no, with Greg, I was kind of secretly hoping that y'all would go to this area, but for the deer scouting to go along with it, because oh, uh, there yeah. there were some cameras in there. It's kind of a a treacherous walk to go get them yep. and I, I didn't really want to go do it uh and so i was like man i kind of hope to go hunt that area and y'all did so i'm really excited to talk about that but uh the initial day that y'all went turkey hunting you did not no hunt so, hunt so we where we went was the same area where i just missed this the second turkey because i heard i told greg i think i heard four maybe five other turkeys gobble but they were pretty far off but they were in a certain direction a very specific direction and i told greg i was like hey like, yeah, I just screwed up on this bird. He ain't going to be talking. I guarantee that. And he ain't going to be in the same spot. But I heard some other birds gobble a little bit further back. Because originally we were going to go to this spot. But I was like, dude, let's let's bounce to this, you know, let's bounce to this other section and, and hunt here. Just because I heard some more birds. I think we can get on them. It's a pretty interesting spot. We can listen real high. And he showed up the same day I missed. He just showed up that afternoon. So I'm like, let's go try to roost some birds. We went out there, kind of hiked through. Hiked through a little area, found some great deer sign. I actually found a spot I would I will be there during the rut if we're not doing any other hunts or have any other kind of constraints uh, during that rut hunt. Found a awesome spot, kind of like in a pine, kind of kind of a pine thing, some growing up pines, and had like a a grassy 
dr- like a drainage that cut through the pines that like the short pines. I say short pines. They're probably 12, 15 foot tall, probably yeah. six year old pines, seven year old pines. And it had some real big pines growing right down that bottom. And dude, the deer trails were everywhere. I found a shed over there. Okay. A little dink. I didn't bring it. It's, I mean, it's in the back of a truck. It's a little dinky little chew toy. Yeah, a little four point side. And anyway, it just got found some found some great stuff for deer hunting. But we got off the back side of that in the drainage where I'd heard some of the gobbles coming from like further up the creek drainage. Found second we got in the hardwoods, just scratching everywhere. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is good. Got up in a little listening spot. And actually I told Greg, I'm like, we might need to move from this spot because I feel like that turkey might roost right where we're sitting. So we ended up backing back up to the pines. Listen, ended up not striking a bird, not hearing any birds uh, fly up or gobble on the roost, which is kind of typical. I typically don't have a ton of success getting one to gobble in the afternoons. But again, I haven't tried it in a little while just because of the lack of success back when we used to try to do it. Went out the next morning, got the same spot. I told Greg, because Greg was uh, was kind of staying in that area. And I told him, I was like, hey, it's a Sunday, but we need to get out there kind of early. Um, and I'm like, I will be, I will meet you at four. We need to be parked there by like four ten, four fifteen. Mm-hmm. So we did that. End up parking my truck in uh, one spot and then going down and, and we we took his van and, and parked in a different spot, spot that we were actually going to listen from. Got in there, a little defensive parking action. Yeah, kinda. Yeah, kinda. And ended up, you know, parking, sitting there for a while. I mean, we were sitting there for. I mean, almost an hour, probably an hour in the truck, about 5.15, I'm like, hey, let's go walk up onto the little high spot behind us. We're going to listen from up there. We go walking up, get set up, and we had, I think, one truck come by us while we were sitting there, probably about 4, I don't know, maybe 4.45, something like that. We get to When we get to the top of the ridge, it's just like trucks start coming by. I had a couple trucks come by. had one truck come from where my truck was parked at like that the other direction and we can hear them coming and it's like it's it's like gray it's it's legal shooting light at this point it's probably six o'clock five fifty five six o'clock almost mm-hmm. and this truck comes see his headlights but it's like you can you can see everything like he had bonnets you can see everything and he pulls in Actually, right where I was parked the day before, I missed the bird, which is only like maybe a hundred yards from us. Yeah, he sees the, he sees the uh, the van. He pulls in, parks right there, and I'm like, dude, this this sucks. Like, dudes are like right here on top of us, and he's gonna walk. I mean, we're listening right there, but you know, it is what it is. And I told Greg, I'm like, hey, when he gets out of the car, truck, just hoot. He does a natural voice hoot, and I'm telling you, dude, he did it a little earlier. It carries for miles. It echoed. I swear it echoed for probably ten seconds after he stopped. <laughs> I mean, it was it was ridiculous. So I was like, just do it when they help out of the truck. Just let them know that we're here. And he does it. And the guy, like, he uh, there's two dudes in the truck. They open the doors, goes to step out. He owl hoots, and they look up at us and they can see us plain. I mean, we're right there on the hill, like right <laughs> right next to him, like right above him. And they look and they just like close the doors and they don't back up and they, like drive <laughs> off. I was like, all right, cool. I'm like, I pre- appreciate they were respectful um, of the situation. I'm like, I get it. Like you park down the road where I can't see you. That's cool. But if you park like right there, like, uh, you know, you know, just right there anyways, kind of a complex situation, but ended up, we heard, I got a little bit further up the ridge. I never heard a bird. Greg, had two gobble at a distance that he couldn't pinpoint. He was like, he was really far off gobbles when he owled at one point. And then he heard a, there was some crows kicking up. And we talked a little bit about this whole crow situation last few episodes. Like, we really yeah. brought with Joe Ham, where like Joe Ham was talking about specifically a lot of times these crows will start harassing turkeys and especially the gobblers. And since that's happened, I've seen that happen a few times. Yeah. So at the club, when we were roosting birds, Crows started dive bombing. Then we started hearing birds fly, turkeys fly right there, and then the turkeys started gobbling at the crows and everything. Yep. Then we saw it when we hunted with Lee on the club, got back. Well, you didn't see it. I saw it. Got back. We were driving out of the club, hit a four-way intersection, and I look over to the left, and there's a gobbler in the road with two crows, like, swooping on them right there. And then when they saw me, they all they all flew off. Yeah. Well, then, uh, so we hear all these crows going crazy. And I had, the day before when I hunted in there, crows were not dive bombing the turkey that I ended up missing, 
but they were sitting above them just just you know calling just you know doing their thing at them and the gobblers reacting well i kept hearing that kind of next to me but i never could hear a turkey gobble and then greg said he heard one way like across the road like kind of where we were listening down into yeah crow called called whatever you anyways and turkey gobbled i never heard it but he heard it and he he, he's like hey got a bird he's like right like right in front of us and he's like probably 600 yards and i'm all right cool so we went over he he showed me where the pen was at kind of little little ridge where i rubbed a little creek bottom and i'm like all right cool let's work our way towards that bird so we worked our way towards him got down the creek bottom ended up we, we try to call no response, zero response. Got down the creek bottom, crossed the creek, started paralleling kind of towards the point where that bird was originally reset. By this time, it's like, it's almost seven o'clock. And we get a hen fired up, and there's a hen down there. And Greg is his turkey fired. Now, one thing about Greg, so I haven't hunted with Greg, okay? We never really talked to Greg about like his calling style and stuff. He's a big friction call guy. He's got mouth calls, doesn't really run mouth calls a whole bunch. Big box call, dude. And he, he's got this custom made push button call mm-hmm. push call what would you call it yeah like push button push button call and i've seen those in the past and i also thought they kind of sounded weird he's got one that sounds i'm talking about fantastic sounds unlike pretty much any other call kind of like some of these other custom calls like you kind of get like a you get a box call or you get like a wing bone you know, like, you know a lot of people talk about wing bones and trumpets it sounds different from everything else and you get good responses his push button sounds fantastic it sounds like unlike mm-hmm. pretty much any other friction call or even a mouth call for that matter and I mean, just I mean, it makes awesome clucks, yelps on it, purrs the whole nine yards. Well, he's going back and forth with his hen with his push button. Ends up, she kind of comes in, but we never really see her. She kind of parallels the creek. She's on the other side of the creek. We're hoping the gobbler's with her. Gobbler never caught, never gobbled nothing. So like, we finally let her work off. We're like, I don't know where he's at. We end up doing a loop. Don't really find anything. Don't strike a bird. And it gets to like nine o'clock, and he's like, he's like, we he's like, we need to probably bounce. I'm like, all right, like. You know, there's some other spots we can go to, but I'm like, I want to go try this one spot where this gobbler's been at that I've I've hunted him three times. Every time I've been in there, I've got on the bird, but he's just real stubborn. Does you know he likes to stay down this one bottom? It's hard to approach him, but I'm like, he's probably there. I doubt somebody else has killed him just because he's kind of quirky. Uh, so let's go try that spot. So we end up driving over, and that's the spot I originally wanted to go to the day before when I slept in. But I yeah. was like, someone's definitely at that gate. Well, while we're driving over there, we we kind of almost pull up to the gate. And as we're pulling up there, a guy presumably came pulling out of that spot. He came by us pretty slow, like right before we get to the gate. I'm like, I think he just left that spot. And we got there, and there's fresh tire tracks there. I'm like, well, we're so going. So he got whooped that morning. He was well, leaving. Well, I don't know. I mean, he was he was 930. I'm like, I don't, either he killed one or he's just bouncing to a different spot, didn't hear anything gobble. Well, <laughs> we park, and I'm like, this is going to be kind of interesting because I'm interested because other guys that hunt it, but they all hunt a very specific way I've seen. Like, I always see boot tracks in a very specific sp- spot, and the turkeys aren't necessarily there. They're, they're like a ridge or two over. Yeah. So we pull up, and I'm like, hey, we're not going to make a sound. We're not going to yelp, call, or anything until we are on the ridge above where he likes to be. Okay? We yeah. are going to shut up. We're going to cross the bottom. We're going to get on that ridge. Once we're there, we'll try to see if we can strike them. We do that. We sl- I'm talking slipped over there, quiet, trying to be as quiet as possible. Get up on that ridge, seeing all the scratching. I was like, I told him, I'm like, this is the la- one of the last spots I hunted him from. And actually, there's a pine tree there where I'd kicked out all the leaves and stuff when I sat down. And I'm like, just heads up, at least in the past, like within like five days ago when I was in here on this turkey, he wouldn't gobble anything other than cutting. Like cutting, he'd get fired up. If you yelp, purred, clucked, he didn't really care a whole bunch. So he's like, all right. So he, he brought got the box call out, did a yelp sequence, no response. He starts cutting on it. Boom. Gets cut off. Gobbler's down there. He's on the same bottom. He's in he's in a kind of a, a flat kind of outside of the bottom. Yeah. But he's down below us. He gobbles across this little across this little creek. And I told him, I was like, I'm like, awesome work. I'm like, finally got one to gobble this morning. But he's in a – I told him because I know the woods really well in this spot. I'm like, he's in some wide open hardwoods. Like, he almost probably could see us. Like, there, we had some good leaf cover and everything. But I'm like, he's probably – we're like, he's probably 200 yards from us. But 
I don't know how we're going to approach that turkey. We kind of looked at the maps. I'm like, the only thing I think, well, we were talking, originally we were trying to set up above them on this ridge we were on, but I'm like, I don't think we can get them across the creek. Like, I just don't think we were going to be able to do it. So I was like, let's go and circle around. Like we were talking, and he, we're like, we both decided, let's circle around and try and get up above them. And it's kind of gradual as it goes up right there. But I'm like, maybe we can get above them, get in the, on the backside of like one of these little points and try to call them around. So we make a big loop. As we're making a loop, he gobbled maybe a couple more times and kind of shut up. We make this loop. Took us about maybe 25, 30 minutes to get around. Got around, crossed around, started side hilling. And I was trying to be kind of aggressive. Like, let's kind of get up and get up around them and, you know, call. Because there's like a very defined line where it goes from like the thick hardwood or like the open hardwoods to like thicker pines as yeah. you kind of go up in elevation. And I'm like, let's try to get up there and, and Greg was like, no, nah. he's like, dude, I, he's like, I think he's going to see us. Like if we keep side hill and he's going to see us cause it's wide. I mean, you can see 300 yards. Yeah. So he's like, let's actually drop down, get down this bottom, come up over this next rise. Let's try him and to see where he's at. So we kind of go down this bottom, come up this little rise, call. He gobbles, but he's pretty far down. He's like, let's cut the distance a little bit more, go down this next little right, go down this next little drainage, and then let's try him. We go down the next drainage, he tries him again. Yep, cut sequence. He gobbles a little bit closer now. Okay. And, um, and now hit the bird, instead of being down right there in that flat, he's kind of shifted up on the side hill, almost same elevation line as we are. He's like, we're going to set up right here. And I was thinking in my mind, I learned a lot hunting with Greg. We're sitting, he, like, we set up like kind of in a little low, like a little, like a drainage. Okay. Yeah. And I'm like, every time I've done this, I've had bad results. Okay. <laughs> so up in the drainage, he comes up, kind of like what happened to us in the club, but Gobbler comes up on that ridge, and if you can't shoot where he pops up at, he's going to look over there, not see anything, and kind of drift off. And it's, yeah. it might be kind of hard. But he's like, let's sit up right here. I'm like, all right, cool. So we set up. I was running the camera. He had the shotgun. And he starts working on his turkey with that push button call. And he he's gobbling. Every time every time he'd yelp on it now, he didn't have to cut. Every time he'd yelp on it, he'd, he'd cut him off. And he just kept going, kept going, kept going. And the turkey kind of drifted over towards us. And then he kind of drift back away, drift towards us and drift back away. Finally, in like maybe 10 minutes, he's now straight above us. So he's swung up. And those thicker pines are probably 80 yards from us maybe. And he's up in that stuff now, like directly above us, like right up the drainage. I'm like, oh, crap. Like this is – I'm th I'm just thinking in my head, I'm like – I don't know if he's going to leave this spot. Like, I really don't think he's going to leave the spot. Cause like every time I've been on the turkey, like he'll get in that one, he'll get in whatever little area he wants. In, and he wants you to come to him. And like, I've shut up on him, try to be quiet. And he just stays there. Well, Greg, we kind of got quiet. Greg started scratching the leaves and stuff like that. And the bird kind of got quiet. Stop gobbling. And I'm like, maybe he's coming. I don't know. Maybe he's staying, maybe he's staying there. I'm thinking he's staying there. And probably 10 minutes goes by. And Greg's like, search. And Greg's like, starts clucking a couple times on that push button and that cluck sounds good and that turkey gobbled and he's like right there and i'm like sounds like he's 150 yards above us maybe yeah. two maybe 200 yards above us and one thing i told greg this turkey a couple times i've been on him he does like this soft gobble mm -hmm. like i don't think it's a true mute gobble after we kind of talked about it, it sounds yeah. different from like what you were talking about but like i had him like that one time at 70 yards and he gobbled at me he sounded like he was 200 yards from me like yeah. gobbled right at me nothing was in between me and him he gobbled and well, anyways, he sounds like he, he's 150 yards up this hill, 100 and, or 200 yards up the hill. Well, all of a sudden, Greg, I can hear Greg sitting maybe five yards to my right, and he's like, he's like, I see him. I'm like, what? And I see where his gun's pointed. And I'm like, kind of like look up there. And I kind of like ease the camera around. And I'm like, I don't see anything. And then all of a sudden, I caught I caught a turkey walking left to right up there, and I saw him. I'm like, is that the gobbler? And I was looking, I was looking for a beard. I couldn't see a beard. And then all of a sudden, he's like, no, he's there. He's strutting. He's strutting right there. And out from behind a tree up there in those pines, I can just see that tail fan oh, open up. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, no. I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, he's got other turkeys with him. <clears throat> he's like, he's like, hey, man. He's like, I think he's got a hen with him. I'm like, well, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that's going to be hard. <clears throat> and I kind of see him. He stands there, and he's kind of, he's kind of pivoting. He's not gobbling right now. He's just kind of pivoting, strutting. And then all of a sudden, I see this other turkey come walking, kind of again now back right to left. And I look at it, and I see a little beard. I'm like, "Oh, it's Jake." And I was like, "Hey, he's got he's got a Jake with him." And it, second, Greg saw that he like he got changed his perspective. And I, I wouldn't have thought about this. He starts clucking and doing some soft yelps. That that push button, 
it's like wherever you, it's like it's open. It looks like the the best way to describe it for somebody who haven't seen the push button. I don't know if all push buttons look like this, but the one he's got, it looks like the bottom of a box call. Okay. Yeah. Like the bottom of the box call without the lid. And whichever way you face the opening of that push button, that's where it directs the calls. Well, if he puts it up against his leg and does it, it sounds super soft and muffled. He's coming. It's the collar with two jakes. And then also he can like turn it away from the turkey and it sounds like kind of like your mouth calling back yeah. behind you. Yeah. Well, he's doing that while he's got his gun up, like soft clucks and stuff and yelps. And all of a sudden those jakes got, it, Jake turned out to be two jakes, got real interested. And they start like kind of working their way down. And he starts kind of working his way down. And then all of a sudden Jake's is breaking. They, they're coming. And I'm like, he's like, he's like, hey, they're coming, they're coming. I, 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 actually, he couldn't see him at this point. I'm like, hey, they're coming right now. Like, the jakes are coming. And he's, like, just doing that soft, like, just clucking. And, dude, the jakes just peel off the side of the ridge. And they're, at this point, we can, we're looking up there, and he's, like, 100 yards, maybe 120 yards, like, up the ridge from us. <clears throat> and he gobbles. Still sounds far away, but he's right there gobbling. And those jakes start coming down. And then the gobbler breaks strut and just starts coming. <sighs> And I'm like, he's coming. And Jake's getting him. And I'm, like, I'm like, he's gonna come right down this drainage to us. But then I was thinking, I'm like, there's some deadfall in the drainage. I'm like, I don't think he's, I think he's gonna swing around to the left. Well, I'm sitting to the left. If the turkeys are 12 o'clock from us, which they were, I'm I'm on Greg's left hand side. Well, they start peeing around the left, the ridge to our left. And I'm like, I hope Greg can kill them before they get like between between before I'm between the turkeys. Mm. And, Greg. and Greg, yeah. Well, they start. You might just have to duck and cover, d- uh, dude. They start coming. They start coming. They're coming. They're like at sixty yards. They're like seventy yards and sixty yards and fifty yards. And at when he gets about fifty yards, he gobbles again. And again, doesn't sound like he's. It sounds like he's a lot further than what he is. He's he just gobbles and then like he blows up. He gobbles, blows up and strut, and then I can start hearing him drumming at that point. I'm like, okay. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. I got to get, get the camera on them and everything. And they, see, they keep coming side hilling. At, and we're sitting in the sun. There's no cover. We're sitting up against these pine trees. There's nothing around us. I'm talking about pine straw, and that is it. Yep. And I'm like, we're about to get bu-. I'm thinking, like, this Jake, one of these turkeys is about to bust us. Because I'm sitting in the sun. I've got a camera. I've got a lens on the camera. And I'm like, I'm trying to, like, keep the camera from looking at the sun so it doesn't, like, reflect any light at them. And I'm, like, trying to be, like, super cautious of that because I'm, like, I don't want to script this opportunity for Greg. They end up coming. The Jakes stick their head up, start periscoping. I'm, like, oh, we're about to get busted. And the Jakes, like, kind of put their head back down, just keep walking, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. And Greg's, like, I got to reposition. And I'm, like, oh, crap. He's, like, he's not pointing at him. And he couldn't shift his body anymore. So, like, they get behind some trees. He swings the gun around. Next thing they know, they get to, like, 30, 35 yards. He blows back up and strut. Break strut. Second he breaks strut, he like turns to look around and Greg's boom just shoots. When he shoots, I kind of like lose him behind some pine trees, big pines. And he shoots, I see a bird like, it looked like he was like hobbling, whatever. And I see these turkeys and they go behind pine trees. The next time I know, I see these turkeys flying. I see two turkeys flying. I'm like, oh crap, he missed. You cursed him. You dude, passed the curse dude, along. I, I was like, I'm filming him. And I, I'm like, these turkeys pitch off the side of the ridge across the creek. And I'm like just filming them through the air. And I hear second gunshot, boom. And I'm like, and the turkey doesn't fall. It just keeps flying. And then next thing I know, Greg's like running past me. And he's like running up the hill. And I'm like, and I kind of like move the camera back over to Greg. And Greg's like running up the hill. I'm like, dude, he just, I'm like, he doesn't realize the turkey flew off. Uh-huh. And he, dude, he gets up there. And he like keeps going up the hill, keeps going up the hill. I'm like, dude, he doesn't know yet. Like he didn't see him fly off. <laughs> And the next thing I know, I see him reach down, grab and pick up a turkey. Pick up that long beard. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Let's and go. on the video, you're like, no way. I'm Let's like, go. dude, I was like, no freaking way, man. And uh, yeah, he killed the bird. He sh- <clears throat> First shot, probably killed it. I mean, probably was going to kill it, but he just didn't drop. He just kind of like hobbled. He like, came up behind a tree, shot again. I, I he and um, he's like, I don't even know if I hit him on the second shot. He just went down. Good freaking job. He, he got so close to you, I was like, man. Oh my God. Oh yeah, he's got some hooks too. Can't 
Keep on the guy off now. They were circling. I was like, man, I hope. I don't know about to blow Jacob's eardrums up. Oh, dude. Hell yeah. God, God. I can't believe they came down here. Dude. When they could, I didn't know it was Jake's. Uh, yeah. That, those are part of the Jake's that's been in here. Dude. Hell yeah. I was turning all the way around. Didn't have any kind of rest. But I mean, they weren't like 30 to go like 35. That's awesome. Hell yeah. This is awesome. And anyways, we went up and he grabbed the bird. I freaked out. I was like, I cannot believe it. was a good one. Yeah, I was like, I can't believe we just killed this turkey. Got some really good spurs, solid beard. And I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, it was awesome. But uh, we'll cut some video in because you were videoing that. Yeah. So we'll cut some video into this podcast for the YouTube audience. Uh, so if you're listening to this on the audio feed, you're missing out. Yeah, go go watch on YouTube. But it, it was a cool experience. And, and what so <clears throat> when we got up there, we kind of like kind of we kind of just laid there next to turkey and just like took it all in and like kind of talked about the hunt and there was some really good stuff that we, me and him me and Greg were talking about the setup and like um, Greg like one thing Greg said he's like Jay, he's like I don't, I, he's like I don't mean this in a bad way okay but he's like I think you're almost too analytical when it comes to turkey hunting he's like I think you're trying to deer hunt like the turkeys I'm like what do you yeah, I'm like what do you mean he's like oh, I could see that he's like you, he's like you were really kind of over analyzing like the like how to get into the turkeys. He's like, the second that turkey gobbled again, and he would cut the distance. He's like, you just don't worry about trying to like get higher in elevation. Just sit, set up. If it doesn't work out, reposition when the turkey drifts the back off. I'm like, that's a good, he's like, he's like, you saw all around us. Like there was no cover. We just got against some big trees and just stayed still. And he's like, I've killed so many turkeys just sitting still in the open, but sitting still on a big tree yeah, and just like getting in position and, and kill turkeys that way. And uh, I was like, that's a, that's an excellent point. That's a really good point. Because there's a lot of times I, I, I get a turkey gobble, and I'm like, man, I want to keep kind of pushing the distance, pushing the distance, trying to get a little close, trying like, to try change setups or whatever. He's like, you just need to set up and try to work him and see if you can get him up. Because we, we called, he called him off the ridge. Yeah. Like out of this little thick stuff that he wanted. And what killed that turkey specifically was the jakes. Yeah. The jakes got all curious, and they were coming, and that gobbler was not going to let the jakes get to the hen before he did. Yeah. So... That played a huge, huge, huge factor for it. But it was... His it dang was, teenage buddies got him killed. Absolutely. Uh. Absolutely. And I just told him, I was like... But it, I told him it was cool to see how he was calling. He's like, the second I saw and you told me they were Jake's with him, he's like, he saw they were Jake's too. But it's like when I confirmed, like, hey, they're definitely Jake's. Like, I'm looking right at him. That's when he was like, he actually started calling more. Because he's like, if it was just the gobbler, probably wouldn't have done that situation. Probably would have shut up and just been quiet and just kind of let him do his thing. But when I saw their Jake's area, he's like, I'm sh I'm confident we can get the Jake's come down. If we get the Jake's come down, he's coming down with them. Yeah. And I was like, that's a dude. Like that's a that's a huge thing I learned on that too. That's a great piece of advice, man, about not being too analytical with it. Uh, I definitely do that too, mm -hmm. for sure. I do that. <clears throat> and that that's actually probably why it took me so long to kill a freaking turkey this year too, because. Uh, looking back over the course of the season, I, I think I've had several opportunities and I, I ended up busting the bird, you yeah. know, like we've talked about it before, um, just trying to get too aggressive and move on them. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that is a, like a lack of confidence and being able to call him a, like a distance well, to you, like, like Greg's talking well, about. Well, another thing that Greg did that I wouldn't have thought of, like once he gobbled, I wouldn't have probably tried to like call him again until I got set up. He's like, no, I want to keep checking them as we're moving because mm -hmm. I want I want to let him know that we're moving. Mm -hmm. Like, I, actually, as a real turkey, because he's like, it's not natural for like a hen go from like one spot across the creek to now being like, if you looked at it, maybe on a track like almost half a mile. We didn't walk half a mile directly past him or anything, but did a circle to get on his side without talking again. He's like, in in like nature that hen would have been talking as we're, as she was walking to him and kind yeah. of swinging around and then get held mm, up that's good and he's like anyways so he said that plus he's like i want to check him and see where he's at because if he doesn't respond we're definitely setting up if he does respond we'll kind of figure out how far he is and then set up accordingly so like when he had cut the distance and got closer he's like we need to set up right here like we don't need to go over this rise we're gonna bust that turkey yeah so i'm like that's a good that's a good point very good tip there yeah, that is a good tip. And like looking back after hearing that tip, I can look back at past hunts and be like, I did, I have done that before, but like kind of unknowingly. Like in Georgia, mm -hmm. where I did that loud, obnoxious call sequence that one time, and we put it in our newsletter that went out uh, two weeks ago. 
um, I put that story in there, but like it was nothing happening all morning. And then I, I, I was getting ready to leave. And so I just, I acted like two hens, like cutting at each other. So I was like calling out of both sides of this mouth call and it sounded like two hens and it got some birds fired up. And when they first gobbled, they were like way far off. And then the second time they gobbled, they were a lot closer. And it was one of those situations where I literally just had to plop down. Actually, kind of similar to the gobbler I killed the other day where I sat down and I had to like look kind of around the side of her. I was like side hill to them. And they literally came running in. And if I had tried to like get to where now I think I would need to get, I would have totally busted uh-huh. up for sure. Because they were literally running to me, but I didn't fully realize it at the time. Yep. So that, that's a really that's a good tip, dude. That's a really good tip. Yep. Right here at the end of turkey season, too. Well, so that happened. He killed that turkey. We were sitting next to that turkey at 1114 on the dot. Nice. So it went from like a super slow morning, nothing happening, to like striking a bird, having a bird killed within 45 minutes to an hour, maybe. Mm-hmm. So and that's one thing. I, I was telling Greg this today when we were hunting a different piece of public, that when... The difference between deer and turkey hunting. Deer hunting, you never know what's going to happen. Okay? Yeah. Well, what I mean by that is you go set up and you might not know you might not know you have an opportunity until you see or hear that buck. Like mm-hmm. here you hear the deer walking, you still don't know until you see him, okay? Turkey hunting, it can change at the drop of the hat because at any point you could strike a gobbler, he could gobble mm-hmm. and you're back in the game. You've been you were from out of the game yeah. to being back in the game. Where deer hunting, it's like you always kind of hope you're in the game, but you never really you know. You don't really know. You don't know. Yeah. Until, you know, you either kill them or it gets dark or your morning hunt gets to midday yeah. and you got to leave or whatever. Yeah. So that's why I told him, like, I really like about turkey hunting is, like, you're you're never truly out of the game. Like, even when you're walking back to the truck, if you still try to strike a bird as you're walking, you never know. You might you might call a deer. You might call it non-deer. You, <laughs> might, you might strike a turkey and strike a gobbler, and he might be 200 yards from the truck on the way back to the truck after doing a two-mile loop or three-mile loop. And, you know, and that kind of happened today, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. Well, and yeah, not not in a great way. But yeah, me and Greg hunted uh, today. Went to a different spot that we'd seen birds in the fall during deer season, and covered a bunch of ground. Got in, and we had a hike in a pretty long ways in order to kind of get to where I wanted to listen uh, over near, over a creek system. And when we got to about. 20 yards of where we wanted to set up to listen and we started we started walking early we, we got set up at like five you know like 5 15 we bust a turkey off a tree at that high point of this ridge it, i mean it's in some thick stuff like you're walking through saplings and crap trying to get to like this listening spot and we bust a turkey out of this big pine tree and i'm like and just one turkey and i'm like i cannot believe we just busted the turkey like, i would never expect a turkey to rooster right there so, I'm like, it might have been a cowboy. One turkey by itself. Like, maybe it's a lone hen in the tree. She could have been nesting up there. Yeah, maybe. Something. I don't know. Yeah, you never know. You, you, you know. You're getting never... ready to nest, I guess. But I we, we ended up not... I, I thought I heard a turkey gobble at like 5.30, like real early. But ended up just, you know, not, not confirming hearing a turkey on the roost. We ended up doing a big loop. I think we ended up, ended up doing six and a half, almost seven miles, something like that. Mm. And... We didn't strike a bird until like 8.40. Ended up doing a big loop and got back on another secondary ridge point. We were going to kind of drop off and kind of, you know, work through a bottom and kind of come back up another ridge. And I actually walked by one of our cameras, and I was like, I'm going to pull this camera down. And while we were there, I don't think we – I can't remember if Greg called or not, but Turkey gobbled, and he was way up on this ridge. And I was like, holy crap. It went from like being so slow. Like we were finding a bunch of scratch, like so slow. I mean, this is this is rough. So a turkey gobbled, and we tried to make a move on that bird, and he never really wanted to – never – he got a little closer to us, but he was at like 400-something yards probably. And, and so you left the camera, right? Y'all didn't pull that one? Yeah, so we ended up working back up the ridge. Which when I saw – when I got the the picture of you walking past it, I was like, oh, my gosh, they didn't get that camera. <laughs> I was hoping you would get it because it's a hellacious walk in there. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you were right there and you didn't get it. Well, my, my thought is I'm just going to turkey hunt it, turkey hunt in there again, grab it at another point. But I was going to get it on the way out, but we walked by it without, like, I thought it was at some point, like, because I didn't have the pin on the map uh, uh, of the camera. You walked past it. Yeah, so, like, after we 
ended up not getting on that turkey. That turkey ended up gobbling straight away from us and walked off gobbling. And I was gonna, we were gonna get that camera coming off that ridge. And next thing I know, we get into the area. I'm like, this doesn't look right. I'm like, where is that camera at? He's like, oh, it's way back. It's like 200 yards behind us. And I'm like, I didn't want to walk all the way back up there to get it. I'm like, I'll just get it at another point. We'll just kind of work out here. It, it is what it is. Ended up there striking turkey. Ended up grabbing a couple of our other cameras that died and found this sucker, which we kind of talked about last week. But this shit right here. Nice yeah, one dude. side. You got a two kick. Well, he's got one decent kicker and a, another kicker that's kind of grown. But fresh shed. It was about laying about 30 yards. I say fresh. It doesn't have blood or anything on the pedicle, but it's from this year. But, uh. Anyway, it was laying like 30 yards from one of the scrapes that one of these cameras was on. This uh, this scrape we got on the screen right here, actually. Yep. So, so yeah, we're going to start rolling through this. Um, this scrape that I'm showing on the screen right now, as you can see, it's on a sparkleberry. When we, we mention sparkleberry all the time, that is a sparkleberry. And this is why I always say that God made sparkleberry bushes for scrapes. I mean, just look at that. Look at that beautiful limb hanging over that licking branch, which is about to get tore up. Oh, the, none of those, none of those yeah, three the, branches are on there anymore. Oh, I know they're gone. They were gone within a couple of days of us putting this out because as it was sending pictures, uh, I could see that licking branch de uh, deteriorate over time. But you can also see on the ground where everything's really tore up, uh, where the scrape is actually opened up on the ground. It's a gigantic scrape. We opened up some of those, but that's the natural scrape. When I first found it uh, a year ago, it looked just like that. Oh, so, dude, right, and right now it's 15 to 16 feet wide. Oh, it's gigantic. Yeah, we got there. I, I told Greg when we walked up to him, like, that's a scrape. Because we'd pass some small scrapes, like, you know, two, three feet uh, there's, Dude, when you're in there in December, it, there are hundreds of scrapes mm -hmm. in there. But... So y'all pass some small ones? Yeah, pass some small And like, because I was like kind of dropping pins on some other scrapes in a couple other areas. And I told them when we get to these cameras to go pull them, um, like you're going to see what a big community scrape looks like. And yeah, it was, it looked very impressive. Well, what did uh, what did Greg say about it? Like, did, has he ever found anything like that? Was I, impressed? I, I, no, I never asked him, but he did say, wow. Uh, is that that deer? No. No, that's not him. That's a that's a good deer though. I mean, he's got great brow tines. Um, I think I think he could potentially, you know, if he made it, he could be a really really nice buck this year. Mm -hmm. He's he's got he's got the the height and everything. He just looks like a little stud, probably three and a half year old, I guess. Maybe yeah, because uh -huh. you ever run this cameras up in a tree, so it, it kinda, always makes him look a little bit smaller. It makes their body look smaller, but yeah, he, he probably is three. But and these half. deer in here look very healthy to me. I mean, as far as their bodies go but there he is working that licking branch i mean dude just awesome go over to youtube guys watch the podcast yeah go go over to youtube and watch it but yeah you can see what i mean by that licking branch just looks phenomenal i mean just that's what they're that's what the sparkleberry is made for and you can see in the background all the other ones now all the other ones last year looked like the one that buck was just working and they have like destroyed them uh, so it'll be. I'm kind of curious to see how it goes. Oh, they're still using it. I mean, uh, that looking branch is still chewed up, like fresh chewed up. Little oh, gray fox, dude. Bro. So I've got multiple videos of gray foxes doing this, rolling, in rolling the, in, in the, the scrape. And the pee is a little cover scent for him. I don't know, dude. Dude, that's weird. I never, I didn't see that. The other scrape. I just went through the other scrape photos. Uh, has a gray fox doing the exact same thing. I bet he smells great after he did that. Oh, here's another buck. A little youngin. Yeah, another younger eight point, you know, not too shabby. Uh, another buck. Seven point. Seven point. I don't know. Does he have another brow? Does he have two brow times? No, I don't know. We're we're not gonna yeah. we're not gonna show all these and we're not spend a lot of time on them because there's some there's some pretty nice deer on here that I'm wanting to get to. Now, uh, one reason so like this is a cell camera, but uh, one thing that we have learned over the years we've talked about this a little bit recently. These cell cameras do not send you every video or every photo. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's sometimes they do, I guess, um, if you, if they've got really really good service. But a lot of times, you know, especially when you're putting them down, and it's, oh yeah, let's go, that's good deer. I don't remember getting that picture. Is no. it is it a nine point? Yeah, it's a either a nine or a ten. If he's got that extra point, look at his belly. Hold on. Look, yeah, dude. Hold look, on a second. Look prego. Did we get this photo? No, that's this is exactly what I'm talking about, dude. We did not get this photo. I don't it, think, it, dude. That is a stud. Come on. 
That's a good one. Nice three-year-old. Shut up. <laughs> He's okay. Short time. Oh, he does have a big belly, but his face is kind of short. It looks weird. It looks like his belly, like his body's bigger than his face. Like he's like a well, the, these the, like you have cell service. Uh, yeah, he he's, yeah, he would definitely he, was not on camera, or we'd never get never get no, this photo. Dude, that's a good deer. I, I'd call him a nine point. He doesn't quite have that that extra point on his right side. But anyways, so this per, prime example of like this thing's down in a hub, kind of a down in a hub. Uh, and you have you have cell service, but not really good cell service down here, and so it's it's gonna miss. Dude, we sometimes. definitely did not get this deer on camera, or he definitely did not get that sent to us. Okay, that deer got killed. And is who, it? Yeah, that yeah, that's the one that got killed. Hold on, and and if if the guy who you know who you are, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the one that got killed. Um, that's good deer. That's a really hold good. on. What what's the date on this? Uh, so that, that's, December sixth. Is that the same one that we had on the other camera? Because I don't. Yeah. Remember, I don't. Okay. Yeah, we had him once. Now we have another one that looks kind of similar to him. That I don't. Oh, know. maybe because the other camera was real grainy. We're like you couldn't tell because I could because yeah because he had that weird side. I couldn't tell if yeah, he broke it off. Yeah, the tip of his main beam is broke off. Okay. That's a great deer, man. It mm-hmm. got great mass. You know, nothing crazy as far as like it, like it. It just depends, dude. Like if you're talking about a high scoring deer. Like he's not a high scoring deer, but I'm not really into that anyways. But like that's a mature freaking Alabama. Dude, that's a really pretty. Right that's a pretty two year old, three year old. Oh yeah. So now, what one interesting thing about this this scrape right here is uh, so far. Oh, well, by the way, one of the branches already broke off. Oh yeah. So one interesting thing about the scrape is the fact that uh, most of these are nighttime so far, and at the same, you know, about the same time. So this this deer's on the other camera as well. Um, He's a pretty neat looking deer. He's just thick. Oh yeah, okay, I remember this one. Uh, he was in the other one on, on daylight, daylight. So the other camera, which is only a couple hundred yards away, on another scrape, that one is almost all daylight. This one's almost all nighttime, at least for this time period, which we're still on December sixth. Dude, there's such a flurry of activity in here. They, where's this deer? At? That's what I want to know. Dude, I have a joke that like these cameras don't send. They send everything except bugs. Dude, By the way, look at that looking branch now. That looking branch is decimated. Oh yeah, the, the one in the center of the screen. Yeah, he's a, he's just kind of a neat looking buck to me. He's just like a little thick boy. Like, <laughs> look at those antlers, man. Um, That's me. I, he's kind, I, he's I, kind I, of I don't, I don't have much show, but I got a lot of personality, just like him. <laughs> uh, well, oh, what, whoa, 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 that was cool. Like, go, yeah, look at him. He freaking. Thrash that sucker. He thrashed that licking thrashed that licking branch. That's awesome. <laughs> That's cool. He broke that sucker. Broke it up. Yeah, y'all gotta so go. So what, what's your thought on this spot, Jacob? Uh, I mean... You know, like versus that other scrape where there, it's all daylight, you know, at the other scrape. Oh, there's that deer. It travels all over the place. Yeah, wide buck. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird because they're only like 200 yards apart, but like you said, like the other scrape had way more daylight activity. But then I kind of understand maybe why because you have thick cover on the on the other scrape. There's thick cover on – it's kind of like in a little saddle hub system. Yeah. And there's thick cover on both sides of it mm-hmm. and coming up the middle of it where this is like a little bit more open. Yeah. And as you go up the ridge, like go up the hill behind it, it's thick, but it, it like there's like a – it's like the first – maybe 20 or 30 feet up the hill, it's not thick. Maybe 40 feet up the hill. Yeah. And then it kind of gets thick. The other one, it's like thick all the way up and around the scrape. Yes. So that might true. be a, a big factor. Look at this bad boy. When he looks at the camera, he is a... He's a goofy deer. Yeah, he's a goofy looking deer. Pass that deer. Bull crap. There ain't no way you'd pass that deer. Dude, I ain't, dude, I ain't putting him on a cart. He's he's long yeah, and lean, and, no, he, he reminds me about my, my velvet deer. I killed in... Uh, and, Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee, just not as big, but has that weird, that frame that kind of like goes up. Oh, there's a daytime pick, little buck, but yeah, you know. on the tenth. All right, let's keep going. Got a bunch of does coming through. Another two year old, maybe three year, probably three. Oh year yeah, old. yeah, that's a. Great well, hold on. No, no, that's not him. It's not him. Okay, where's this deer at? <sighs> See, if this camera didn't die, we would have probably got him on camera because his his dude, his antler is just out of frame like it it was laying just out of frame of this camera yeah that's a that, that's the thing dude these cameras so that's that's another thing about this one so it's a tacticam reveal x uh and we had it on now given we had it on a pretty like 
extreme setting, I guess. So it takes three photos and uh, what, 15 second video Mm -hmm. each time it's triggered. And uh, those we have learned with these cameras, if you have it on that setting, it will last one month. Because we put it out on the the third and it died on the second. Yeah. So there's that one deer again. No, that's a different deer than what we were looking at before. That's oh, the that's wide a, six. That's the six point. So there's two really, really wide deer. This is one of them. No, I don't know. Okay, what do you describe as really wide? This deer. Okay, there's not two of them then, because that deer is considerably wider than the seven point. Well, I mean, the seven point is pretty wide, but he's not like crazy wide. Oh. That, the six point is crazy wide. No. No, that's not him. Oh, yeah, this is when we had we had multiple mature bucks in daylight on this day. Because that's a different deer. So that's a 7.44, and then like one minute behind him is another one of those bucks. Yep. So they, they had to have been following a doe. So what's your thoughts on that? When you get a video like this where all of a sudden two of the better bucks that we've had on camera come through with each other on camera at 7.45 a.m. Well, look how dark their tarsal glands are. I mean, they're definitely – they know probably more than likely there's a doe either in heat or about to come into heat that they're both checking on. There's not two interests in fighting each other because the doe's not quite right there. But that's one thing. I don't think we got many bucks that were like super broken up. Mm-mm. No. So <clears throat> we had the broken bean buck. But how, so how does that influence your thoughts on this spot for maybe going into this coming season? Oh, about- well, we have a future guest on the podcast, so we're going to talk about that. But yeah, you get that on camera, you better you know go in there. He's a, he's That's what I'd call wide deer. I, I would pass that deer in a heartbeat. Shut up. Oh my gosh. My goodness. Yeah, that's a freaking... That's what I'm talking about, dude. Yeah. If if you like six points, again, go to the... Go to, the <laughs> go to YouTube. If you like big wide six points, dude. Yeah, that's a good deer. And he's got the brows to match. And like, you know, a lot of those deer, they have little nubs for brows, or, or they don't have, like, any brows at all. It's just a bunch of... Again, you just... A few... Oh, is that a buck in the background? No, it's a doe. It's a doe? Okay. Well, look, you Big said, old doe. You said a hen was a long beard? Oh, there's... oh, dude, hauling. Oh, that's a dog. Oh, coon dog getting after it. Dude, we got dogs chasing our deer back there. Yep. No, the, the interesting thing is looking at the different time periods of the flurry movement. Because that, that's the biggest thing is analyzing the data that comes through on trail cameras in order to be able to use... Like this needed information on like specific date ranges that you might need to be you know hunting. I guess it's raining right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big six point. Oh, oh, whitey, no heel. Is there that, he is again. Is that him again? Yeah. yeah, daylight. He was all over it for a couple of days there. Oh wait, no, that's a different. No, deer. that's that seven point. No, that's not that seven point because oh. he's got a wonky side. That's a that's another wide deer. And this kind of goes back. Oh to yeah, because we we're, we thought about that, but again, like the the, the video, the photos you get in, um, you know, they're kind of downgraded quality. So you, you got to request the what is it, HD version or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's just I mean, overall, just different flurry of activity. So yeah, there's a specific date range that that dude that sucker walks all over that spot that in that specific date range. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yeah, that's a good deal. See, one thing. So I've I've, I've told you this before, but like. I think it's worth if you have a, a cell or if you have a camera specifically on it, any kind of scrapes is paying attention to your doe tarsal glands and like if any of them are starting to get any kind of darkness to them because like we've noticed that in a couple spots where like you know you'll have a group of like four or five does come through and only one of them will have like slightly stained tarsals and the other ones aren't even like close to being stained. And it's like, well, clearly you can kind of figure out there's probably one of them is going to come in a heat earlier than the others. Yeah, definitely. Look at that little fawn by herself. That's another thing is these little uh, fawns. When I start seeing those fawns, like especially if you're using cell cameras to monitor a spot, when I start getting pictures that's, that's of... Like nub and buck right there. Well, even like a little button buck or, or this year's fawn, when I start seeing them without mama like showing up at scrapes, that gets my attention because I'm like, okay, mama's out doing something, you know? She, and, and especially like there's probably that same little fawn walking around a couple hours later, uh, you know, not really knowing what to do, I guess. <clears throat> That's because mama's probably out getting chased. But um, what do you think of this spot in general? Like, are you interested in hunting the spot next year? Like seeing what you're seeing here? I mean, around specific date ranges, yes. I mean, outside of that, no. Uh, 
I, I'd be interested in seeing if there's a there's that same uh, button buck came through. I'd be interested in, in seeing you know in within a couple of days of when some of these mature bucks are daylighting. If you see another like it might not be the same deer, but another mature buck daylighting that same time period for whatever reason, I think that'd be something worth talking about. Like, okay, so he's not he's not trying to pee on his legs. He's his legs spread out. Yeah, he's peeing right in the scrape. That's hoof marks. It's deer domestic. Well, violence. and that would be the last photo. So yeah, January second, it died. And we put it out on December 3rd. So I'll tell you what, that kind of changes my perspective on how we're using these cameras too because these specific cameras, I don't think I'm going to do on video anymore because they died too quick. Well, it depends on where it's at. If I put one on the club and I can get to it, I'll put it on video. But if I put one in a spot like where this is, I'm just putting it on photo. Yeah. And I just, you know, well, I'll just give up the video. Even though it's nice having the video and kind of seeing where they came from, where they're going, whatnot. Uh, I, dude, it's just not worth it. I mean, it freaking. It yeah, that, dude, we lo- we missed the best time. Cause, I know, because I mean, the rut was coming, and even the other one died on January 11th. So, I mean, like we missed out on probably some of the best, at least rut activity. Which towards late December, there again, these are on scrapes, but towards late December, we uh we we saw a decrease in activity for sure. So, to and that's another thing about why I kind of like monitoring these scrapes with these cameras is um, when the activity is like really hot and heavy. That tells me at least that you know something's about to happen. Most likely, like there, uh, the like there, there's a doe that's going to come into heat there pretty soon, and uh, and then when the activity kind of dies off, that means they're probably chasing in there either that or or another doe somewhere else has kind of come into heat and i don't know maybe they've kind of moved on or whatever um but yeah so that deer this is that eight point that we had on this camera i thought this could have been him but he doesn't have those kickers but he he looks kind of similar so we never got the shed buck on camera not one time good to know yeah and that's uh that's two years of history with these specific scrapes now so that's two years in a row that we have ran cameras on these exact scrapes so that I don't know, dude. It's interesting. I th- I feel like we got plenty of data. What I want to do is look at both years and see where the dates kind of line up with one another. So it's like, okay, is is it like December fourteenth through the seventeenth? Those are like when we get the majority of our daylight pictures in these areas. Is that when we need to be in there hunting or or whatever? So uh, that that's what I'm gonna do. I haven't really looked through it yet, but these are some of the bucks. Check out this little two year old dude. Pretty little thing. Just a little perfect basket. I'm like, dude, he'll be a good one. He he could grow into a stud. You never know. Yep, definitely. That's him. Yep. Same deer. Little basket. Look at that black streak down his back, too. Look at that cape, dude. That'd be a cool deer to mount if he gets a little bit bigger. So, anyways, mm. that's it. Those are, those are our trolls. There's a couple other bucks on here, but uh, I'm not going to go through them right now. Nothing, nothing crazy. Like you know, some tall deer. Uh, nothing that we didn't see on the other camera. So the other camera actually had, I think, more bucks on it, uh, or, or at least more big bucks. This one had a lot of smaller bucks on it, uh, and this one had a lot of daylight activity and and some chasing going on. Um, but actually, I'll cut in a, a video from this camera. But you can see kind of like what Jacob was talking about here. Where look at look at the sapling thicket behind it, and this particular area is is a lot of sapling thickets like that, um, kind of like up in North Alabama. You're kind of outside of, I guess, traditional pine country. At mm-hmm. least in this part of Alabama, you are, and so you find like cedar thickets and sapling thickets like this. And even though like that's not something that would really fire me up in most pl- like that wouldn't fire me up at all on my hunting club. Uh, here it's like the only thick cover they seem to have, so they they end up using it, you know. Yep. So yeah, no, it's it it kind of throws you for a loop. I'll say this: after turkey hunting in there, it's like it's crazy how much thicker it is when it's like full full foliage in there. It makes it much more challenging. But like, yeah, once the leaves come off, you're like, man, this ain't that thick. But like for the deer, it's as thick as it gets for them. Yeah, no so doubt. It makes it pretty awesome. But uh, other than that, um, what else you got? No, no, dude, that that's it. I'm excited to get back in there and start running some cameras. Uh, I want to get the, the. We still got 
uh, two cameras in there that we got to pull and check. Uh, one of them we put out. It's a cell cam, but it d- it did not have service like at all when we put it out, and it sent us like two or three pictures. But it definitely had to have gotten more pictures than that. So that card's probably got a lot of stuff we haven't seen on it. So I'm excited to pull that one. And then other than that, I just want to get in there and and just get more familiar with the terrain. And I want to go hit some like creek crossings and stuff mm-hmm. and see if we can start picking up some of these deer, you know, midsummer and make a concerted effort to, to kind of locate them and, and locate some of the bigger ones that we have on camera. Well, I pulled another camera a couple weeks ago that had bigger bucks on it than pretty much everything we just looked at. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're kind of in a separate area, and we're not going to show any of those. No. <laughs> we're going to be a little close to the chest about those. Yep. Negative. Negative. Anyway, well, um, other than that, I got I got a little uh, dinner party I got to get to. So Yeah, you late. Yep. But anyway, appreciate everybody watching the podcast. Appreciate everybody listening to the podcast. Again, we'll get to some more Q&As on next Thursday's episode. So feel free to write in some more Q&As. Appreciate all the listener success stories coming through for everybody who's been killing turkeys using some of the tips and tactics discussed on the podcast with past podcast guests and current podcast guests. So appreciate y'all watching. Appreciate y'all. I all can't talk. <laughs> Also appreciate you guys listening to the podcast and we'll catch you back here on next episode of the podcast on Monday. And remember y'all stay Southern.